In this video, we're going to look at solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. In the last few videos, we've seen quadratic equations that factor. A large number of equations that we can solve won't factor. Using the equation or the quadratic formula is one particular approach that we could use. Let's just remind ourselves of a quadratic equation. Quadratics can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. If we want to use the quadratic equation, we can say the solutions x will be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This looks quite daunting to begin with, but all it is is a case of identifying a, b and c and substituting them into this formula. The formula will be given to you in a formula book. So let's take a quadratic equation. So x squared, then we're going to have plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. So this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, as we've seen in the previous videos. I'm going to look at this and I say to myself, I think I can factor it. So setting up our brackets, we need two numbers that multiply to give the c term, which is negative 8, and the same two numbers that, mold, uh, that add to give the b term, which is positive 2. I can see that that's going to be x plus 4, and we'd have x minus 2. So from the previous videos, we know the solutions are going to be negative 4 or positive 2. So with that particular equation, I can factor it. If you can factor it, go ahead and factor it. It's a lot easier than using the quadratic formula or quadratic equation. Let's just see how this works, though, and we're going to take this particular equation. So if we look at the value of a here, it's 1. We've got 1x squared. So what I'm going to do is write that a is going to be positive 1. We can see that b is going to be equal to positive 2, and c is going to be equal to negative 8. And it's really quite important that we keep these negatives in. So all I'm going to do is substitute it into here. So x is going to be equal to minus b. So we're going to have minus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, b squared is going to be 4. Then we're going to have minus 4 lots of a, or a is 1, multiplied by c, which is negative 8. We're going to put all of that over 2 lots of a, which is going to give me the 2 lots of 1. If I just tidy this up, we've got x is equal to, now, minus 2 plus or minus the square root of. This gives me 4. Then I've got negative 8 multiplied by 4. We've got the two negatives, so that's going to give a positive, And that will give me 36 under the square root. That's all over 2. So what I've now got is x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 36, which is 6, over 2. So if I take now the plus, this is going to give us, and I'll just branch this off. If we take the plus, x is going to be equal to the negative 2 plus the 6 over 2. And we can see from that now that negative 2 plus 6 is going to give me 4. 4 over 2 is going to give me 2. If I take now the negative, what we've got is the negative. So write this out. x is negative 2. I'm going to subtract 6 and divide by 2, which is going to give me now negative 8 over 2, which is going to give me negative 4. And we can see that they are the solutions. So quite clearly, it's a lot easier to factor this than it is to go ahead and use the quadratic equation, or if you like, the quadratic formula. The only reason we would use this is if we couldn't factor it. So for example, if we had now x squared uh, plus 2x and then minus 9 is equal to 0, we don't have two numbers that can multiply to give us the negative 9, but would also add to give 2. So I would use the quadratic equation or another method to go ahead and solve this equation. 
it's kind of like sometimes opening a door or kicking a door in. If you can open the door, just open it. If you need to kick it in, go ahead and kick it in. What I'm going to do is set this up on the calculator. So on your calculator, what we can have is the following. So we're going to have minus and then we'd have the B. We start with plus. We're going to switch this over for a minus. Then we'd have B squared minus 4 lots of A multiplied by C all over 2A. And all we would do is feed in our values of A, B and C. So in the calculator, we are put in B, which is 2. We'd go ahead and put B in again. Then we'd have now 4 times by A, which is 1, times by C, which is the negative 8. And that's going to all be over now, 2 times by the 1, and we can put that in. So that gives us 2, which is one of the solutions. To find the other one, we simply swap this for the minus. So swapping it for the minus, we get minus 4. So this is how you can set up the quadratic equation on a calculator. So let's go ahead and do a couple of these. So what we're going to have then is a quadratic equation and we'll give our answers to two decimal places. So to 2dp. I'll also look at something that we call an exact answer. So we'll give an exact answer and one to two decimal places. So let's take this equation here. Let's say we've got 3x squared. We're going to have minus 2x and that, uh, let's go for minus 20 is equal to 0. So it's in the correct form. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. The value of a is going to be positive 3. The value of b is going to be negative 2 and the value of c is going to be negative 20. So we can say that x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I'm going to plug this into the calculator and we'll go ahead and find the two possible roots or solutions. So I'm substituting in now the following. So we can see now that this will give us the negative 2. Then I'm going to have the plus. Then I'm going to have the negative 2. So all I'm doing is simply subbing this in. 4 times by A. Well, A is going to be 3. Multiplied by C, which is the negative 20. And that's all going to be over 2 lots of A. We know that A is going to be equal to 3. So from here, this gives us what we call an exact answer. It gives us now that X is equal to 1 plus the square root of 61 over 3. That is exact. If we wanted to give this now to two decimal places, we could say it's 2.94. So just putting this in, 2.94, and that's given to 2dp. What we would now need to do is find when we switch over to the negative from the positive. So we just scroll back into the numerator of the fraction and switch this over and it will give us 1 minus the square root of 61 over 3. And that is the exact answer. So 1 minus the square root of 61 over 3, which as a decimal answer is going to give me now negative 2.27. So negative 2.27, and again, that is correct to two decimal places. So this is what we get. Um, nice and straightforward fairly logical and uh, we've just plugged the numbers in. Whilst we're here, uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just draw a quick sketch of this. We'll come on to sketching in another video, but we have some interesting points here. So what these are now, these are two exact solutions to the quadratic equation. So I can put one just here and what we're going to have, we'll have one, let's put it just here. This is going to be now one plus the square root of 61 divided by 3, comma, 0. We can see that this is when we would have y is equal to 0. So this is the graph of y is equal to 3x squared minus 2x minus 20. The other one is going to be just here, and that's going to be now 1 minus, so 1 minus the root of 61 over 3, comma, 0. We'd have our minimum point down here, now, if we consider where this crosses the y-axis, that is where x is equal to 0. 
So where x is equal to 0, we would have 0 plus 0. Then we would subtract 20, and that will be somewhere down here. Our parabola is a sweeping curve, and it's symmetric. In a later video, we will look at the line of symmetry, or the axis of symmetry, and how to find it. But the quadratic equation will look something give or take like so. So it come up, and it will do something like that. So we can say that y is equal to 3x squared minus 2x minus 20. And that is a rough sketch. I'm just going to put this value on down here, and that's going to be 0, comma, negative 20. So if that's solving a quadratic equation, giving our answer as an exact answer. This now means these are non-recurring, non-terminating decimals. They just go on. So that is exact, and this is to two decimal places. Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and try another one. Let's say we've got, uh, let's try something a bit more challenging. Let's say we've got 5 is equal to 2x, and then we'll have x minus 1. So what we want to do is solve this and give our answers an ex as an exact value, and then to two decimal places. So what I'm going to do is expand the right-hand side. 2x squared minus 2x, and then I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. This is now in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So a is going to be equal to 2. b is going to be equal to negative 2. c is going to be equal to negative 5. So in the calculator, I'll start again rather than changing the values. We're going to have now negative then we'll have the negative 2, that is the value of b. Remember, all I'm writing in is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So taking this from the formula book in front of any exam, then we'll start with the positive. We're going to have b squared. So negative 2, which we need to square. Then we're going to subtract away from that four lots of a, which is 2, multiplied by c, which is negative 5. And all of that is going to be over two lots of a, which is going to give me two lots of 2, which is 4. 1 plus root 11 over 2. So x is equal to 1 plus the root of 11 over 2. And then we know that x is going to be equal to 1 minus the root of 11 over 2. Let's get a decimal answer for this one. So if we do that, 2.16. So we can say 2.16, and that's given now to 2dp. If we look at the other one, so just switching this over to the negative, we're going to end up with that now being 1 minus root 11, which is negative 1.16. So now negative 1.16. When you're solving equations, do check that each of these solutions is valid. Sometimes they won't be valid. So, for example, now if this was a length, so let's say, let's just, uh, let's turn this into a bit of context. We've been looking at areas. Let's say I've got now a rectangle, and the rectangle looks something like this. So what we have is the following, and let's say that we're told that the area is 5. So my area is going to be equal to 5. This length is going to be 2x, and this length is going to be x minus 1. So with this one, 2x multiplied by x minus 1 would be equal to 5. We would solve the equation, and then we would check our solutions. Now if we look at this one, this one looks to be good, as it would give us now a positive quantity. This one, though, would not be, and we would say that this is not a valid solution for this particular problem. So whilst it solves this equation, when we bring it into context, if we're looking at an area, we've got two lengths, a length can't be negative, so we couldn't have now negative 2.16 for this length. So there we go, quadratic equations, we solve now by using the quadratic formula, or what we call the quadratic equation. That is, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a, once we have the quadratic in this form. Any quadratic that you can solve, we can use this particular approach with, if we've got the skills to do it, or we could use a different technique called completing the square. 
So check that it doesn't factor first. If it doesn't, this is one approach for you.